The year is 2023. PBS Plus has just launched bringing the world's streaming services to 4,387. How can anyone be expected to go through all this content? Fear not, loyal passengers. Captain Joe Shoes and his first mate Mez are here to travel through space and time to bring you the best nuggets pop culture has to offer. Strap in. It's time for the Car Jomez Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 352 of the Car Jomez Podcast. I'm Mez, and my co host, as always, is the magistrate of Caravan City, the man with thoughts. I'm (laughs) Captain Joe Shoes from the Car Jomez Podcast. Yeah, you are, buddy. Are these. What kind of thoughts are these? Are these happy Inquisitive. Oh, okay, that's good. We like that. That's all right. Yeah. They call <laughs> me the inspector of inquisivity. <laughs> that's a new one. <laughs> that's what they call me. I was just out at Ooh. the local food store. Oh, okay. And they said, there he goes. As I was looking over, I was perusing the, the produce aisle, Gomez. Oh. I was perusing it. And they what said, are you doing there? there? Inspecting out of inquisitiveness. You hate that aisle. What are you doing over there? It's inspecting <laughs> for science's sake. I'm sure you gave it all negative. Th- this take this out. Thumbs Get this down. out of here. Thumbs down. Negative main men. That produce aisle. More sugar. What are we doing? Why do we even have this garbage? I don't know. I think we should have the cereal aisle should be bigger. I think we should have more cereals. It, it, there is so much cereal that's missing out of my aisle. We could so use many. more space. So many. Something. One little box. What are, we, what are we doing? Come on. I see they got. Uh, did you see last time I went to the supermarket? I saw they had icy cereal, like frozen icy, yeah. you know? And it's like a red and blue raspberry flavor. It's I can't find any of this. At my oh. store because they are on limited space, so they only play the hits in the cereal aisle, and this is why we That's need to get rid of the goddamn produce. That's why certain, yeah, certain stores I never even bother to look in the cereal. If you got half an hour, if you don't dedicate the full thing to cereal, I'm not even walking by. Get no, because mine here. is is not just cereal; it's. Breakfast pastries, you know, pop tarts and stuff. Oh, and that's on the other side. Coffee and like it's just no, whatever they think the goes in your morning goes in this one aisle. And coffee it's nonsense. Coffee with me is by the cookies in both of my supermarkets. It's cookies, treats like that. Well, Cereal, I gotta see who does your planogram then. I like it though. Literally, the I will say in our shop, right? The whole aisle on one side is cereal. The front, the first like. You know, I say like little space is like the organic shit, but mm-hmm. then the rest is the good, the heavy hitters. Ooh, it's nice. I always find the stuff there at Shoprite. It's good. I can't complain. Thank you guys for listening to the Car Jomez podcast. Remember to smash that subscribe button wherever it is that you're listening, or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you leave a five star review. Get down in the comments on YouTube. Tell us what you think, what you like, what you don't like, what you act like, what you taste like, and. If you are so inclined to leave one of those five-star reviews, screenshot it, tweet it to us at Car Jomez, and we will send you an autograph at 8x10 as a token of our appreciation because, hey, it's the least we can do, right? Yeah, sure. But with that being said, Gomez. Ooh. What's up, baby? Hit the breaking news music. Oh, shit. Breaking it. Breaking news. Uh. Joey, what, what's going on, bro? What's Gomez, happening? Gomez, this was an active week. Oh, active. We've oh, got shit. good news. We've got bad news. Oh, I don't like that part. What's got happy on? news. Okay, yeah. we got sad news. Oh, no. But when news breaks, I pledge to fix it. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> so what's happening? So let's start with some bad news. Oh, I don't want to. All right. I guess, sure. My number one very good friend. Oh, yes. That's the Iron right. Sheik I passed forgot. away last week. I forgot. It's been such a crazy week. I forgot all about that. That's yeah. what I mean. This is action packed week. Wow. Uh, Sheik is someone I got to know 
relatively well on the indies for a long time. We were on an awful lot of shows together for a couple years. And uh, this is really sad. I am going to miss a, he's been in poor health. I haven't seen him in a while. And it's not like we were so close where I would text and check in on him or anything like that. Sure. But he was just someone I enjoyed seeing whenever I got the opportunity. And he was involved in my favorite match of my career mm. uh, 13 years ago, actually. Just uh, We just passed the anniversary wow. uh, in Queens, New York against Val Venus, where That's I took me. his towel. That's right, baby. And uh, we did a hip swivel like pose down before the match. And the Iron Sheik like, interrupted came down said told everyone in attendance that this was a sport bar not a gay bar and that he beat mr bob Backlund in 1983 with wrestling and what val venus and i were doing was not the wrestling so then he grabbed val's towel threw it in the ring which i took to mean as he was basically forfeiting on behalf of val venus yes of i course. declared myself the hip swivel towel champion and i actually defended that towel yes, on did. shows for another couple of years. And if you go Numerous to like defenses. one of these uh, sites like cagematch.net, which documents championships and matches and shows and indie wrestling, well, all wrestling, you'll see that there is a title history is for there? the hip swivel towel That's championship. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> um, So I, I'm going to miss the Sheik. I'm going to sure. miss him. He was a good dude. Um. He just had that A and E biography come out. He had that documentary movie that his guys put out, and uh, what a worker! What a worker! What a second act of his career to come in and be like the Howard Stern guy, and yeah, you know, make a you know another good living off of that kind of stuff. It's true because to me, the Iron Sheik. By the time I'm watching wrestling, the Iron Sheik is 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 it's towards the end, you know. Yeah, he's feuding yeah, with yeah. Slaughter. Like it's not like he's he's hurt. He's not doing anything really, yeah. you know. So to me, it's always like, oh, I remember him. And then years later, it's like, look at the Iron Sheik is fucking headlining comedy shows. So my favorite Iron Sheik story. I I, I love Ooh. telling this one. Yes, please. Um, it doesn't even include me. Um, it's a, Mar it's a Marty Janetti story that I got from Marty. God bless. So Marty brings a girl. Yeah, back to his hotel room of course and he's getting phone call like you got to come down to the lobby whatever whatever so next door to marty was the sheik so he knocks on the sheik's door says sheiky baby can you watch the girl i'll be back in like an hour i gotta run downstairs whatever watch the girl so i guess sheik and the girl hook up i i don't know but when marty comes back up i guess like they got a they got a little uh, frisky in the room and Sheik apparently gave her a short arm clothesline and knocked her the fuck out. <laughs> Jesus. So Marty's like, Sheik, like, what the fuck? And Sheik looks at her, looks at Marty and goes, Marty, it's no Sheik baby fault that she don't know how to bump. <laughs> oh, I see how Sheik folks. <laughs> Uh, that one is a pretty popular one. And also the one about the drug test where Sheik Ooh. shows up at TV and they go, Sheik, we got the results of your drug test. He goes, okay, Bubba. They go, yeah, it came back positive. He goes, excellent. Good news, Bubba. And they go, no, <laughs> Sheik, that's bad news. He goes, what do you mean? Positive mean good. <laughs> and they go, well, not in this situation. <laughs> he ain't lying. <laughs> uh rest in peace Sheik. he was in very poor health for a while um yeah it's been a while so you know he hadn't been making towns or anything like that uh john morrison has a movie coming out it's like a horror movie with a uh an iron Sheik doll whoa where okay. he's like a killer so well, that'll it, be ooh. and uh he had actually flown down to atlanta to record the sheik's voice like reading the lines oh, and stuff. okay so that'll be coming out i forget what the name of it is but uh if you go to jomo's social media or or taya's i'm sure like it's it's gonna be out there yeah, i'll put it um, up there so now i feel like extra invested in wanting to watch this I, you got me horror six movie with horror. the iron sheik is a six weeks of horror baby <laughs> wrestling week yeah
Yeah. Uh, so that's a that's some sad news. Um, wow. And this may be a little more sad news, depending on what <laughs> side of the fence you're on. <laughs> Back to back, what are we doing? Come on! Hey, sometimes these things happen. I thought you're supposed the, to like pepper in a good one. Well, in the words one. of a great philosopher, life's not fair. Sometimes <laughs> Goliath kicks the shit out of David. It's the truth, bro. Most that of the was time, from the sometimes. cinematic classic, uh, dating Tad Hamilton. Win a date with Tad. Win a date with Tad Hamilton. <laughs> what That's a movie! A great one. So good, the best. God bless. So, yeah, listen, this may be good news for some people. Uh, maybe. All right, let me see. I'll be the judge. After three seasons, Young Rock has been canceled. Oh, this is, I believe, right, most people are surprised it got three seasons, right? Because I, I don't am, hear, like I, like... I don't see how, with all this content that we have, right, all the shows that we have, for this show to be three seasons on NBC... Like, I understand The Rock is a star. I haven't heard any at any point this show doing great ratings. No. It was entertaining enough, but I feel like so much of the entertainment derived from the show was literally geared toward wrestling fans. Because it's all 100%. about seeing the guys who are portraying the older wrestlers. Oh, look, this guy's playing Andre the Giant. Oh, Rocky Johnson's 100%. telling stories. To me, the, the star of the show is the guy who plays Rocky Johnson in it. I think that guy was great. And the show is entertaining enough to continue watching. You're not going to hate the show. You may not love it, but I don't. There's nothing about it that's going to make you hate it. You know Quick, what I mean? Easy watch. Yeah, it's in a very easy it's watch, just, and especially yeah. if you're a wrestling fan, it's got that built-in yes, appeal. You're gonna pop stuff. every once in a while. Oh shit! Look at this. Yeah, yeah. and we talked about like the Shawn Michaels drama yes. in it. Yeah, like so that was good. You know that, that, is, that kind of funny. stuff is good. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that this got three seasons still is just like wow, like. I'm good for The Rock, I guess. This is why. This is why he's come crawling back to the Frass franchise here. The he Rock never is not gonna doing do so good. He was never going to do it, but he came crawling back to Vin Diesel. Because Vin Black Diesel. Adam, boom. Young Rock, boom. He needs a hit. He needs something. Would you say, Gomez, that Dwayne Johnson has hit rock bottom? Love it. It's the truth. It's Black it's a, Adam it's a, was a flop. It's a low point. It is. I, and now with all the stories that have come out about The Rock, especially during Black Adam and the promotion of it, and then him trying to fudge the numbers and all that stuff. <laughs> fudge the numbers. What fudge nice. the numbers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so there goes something out of my, uh, my I'll get to it when I get to it type shows or like when sure. I go to sleep, let me catch up on a couple episodes. Yes. That is. That's perfect for that. Yeah. it's Like I said, quick, easy watch, and the entertainment factor is built in if you are a wrestling person. I wonder how it did with non-wrestling people. I wonder if they got a kick out of it. Because it seems like, really, it's for wrestling fans. Like, you know? I So much of it, even the wrestling stuff, is like, oh, here are Afa and Sika. I can't see regular people, like, knowing, like, I can see Andre the Giant, Macho Man sure. Savage, even Iron Sheik, you know, has crossover appeal. You know what I mean? Because of his yeah. all that crazy stuff he's been doing in the past decade or so. Like, he's still around enough where I can see people going, oh, that's that crazy Iron Sheik guy. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the Wild Samoans, even Rocky mm -hmm. Johnson, like, to me, yeah. most people are just going to be like, oh, this is The Rock's dad. 100%. That's The Rock's dad. That's yeah. Him. I get it. Mm. Uh, some good news, Gomez. Yeah, finally, Conyo, let's go. Now, this this may not even be too good of news, depending on Here we go. how your excitement for this project has waned over the past 40 years. 40? The, what is this? The Venture Brothers oh, have finally yeah, announced a date for their movie, July 21st to digital, July 25th Ooh, to DVD man. and Blu-ray, Radiant. Yeah. Is the blood of the baboon heart? What a title! What a aggressive, perfect venture for the title, right there. Absolutely. Love. But the question remains now, this is a project, like I said, years that we've been hearing about this, and then it got pushed back. And then, and that's been the issue with the Venture Brothers forever. Yes. Once we got past like season three, season four took like four years. I then never so finished the show because it's just, I all of a sudden, you're like, oh, Venture Brothers is back. I was like, what? I didn't know it was three years ago. It's and then crazy. they would do something like drop a 
Halloween uh, special. Episode. Yeah, a special episode. Which was like the first thing in two years. And then they go back to taking another two years off. And it was like, geez, guys. It's like, yeah, we, we want you to make the show you, you want to make. But go, like, come on. Deadlines, people. Deadlines. So you still excited? I mean, I'm I'm now seeing it with a an actual yes, firm. Yes, because you you were like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Every I time believe I brought it, when it I up, it, exactly. I don't believe it. And I understand why you would be like that, totally. But hey, it's here, so I'm I'm excited. Now I will make sure I finish that last season of Venture Brothers, and I'll be ready for it. I'm excited. I love this I show. I think they, the show is they fantastic. were on Hulu. They're probably on HBO. Right? They're on Max. Oh, I've been watching. I was going to say they're on Max. Three. All the yeah. Adult Swim stuff is over there. All the Adult Swim is over there. If you didn't know, yeah, definitely check out Max. Is good for that. Oh, and mm. another big story, Gomez. <laughs> oh, damn! Monday, this past Monday, what happened, bro? Was the fifty-second birthday of the Grimace. <laughs> And yes, McDonald's is celebrating by putting out a Grimace birthday combo meal that includes you get your choice of either a Big Mac or a 10 piece McNuggets, which is like, OK, already a fucking the most regular basic value shit. meal. The, the most basic. It is like, could you pick anything more no. generic? And this is always our complaint with like the celebrity meals they do. It's and whenever special. they have a promotion, there's never anything that feels relatively special. But here's where they're going to hook you, Gomez. Yeah, baby. The Grimace Shake. Now, you see, I, I'm, I'm interested, but they don't let you know what it is. I'll tell you what it is. What is it? It's it the is Grimace. Van- vanilla soft serve with berry flavors berry to flavors. give it a purplish hue. To represent the grimace. Ooh. And now why is this grimace shake a big deal? Is because 52 years ago when the grimace was first introduced. He was known as evil grimace. <laughs> and he would steal milkshakes a la the Hamburglar. Oh, okay. So they did the same shit. Okay. <laughs> so now this has raised the question. Who really is the grimace? What do we know? About the grimace, we know one thing, Joe. Only one thing. What's that? Nothing can stop the grimace. <laughs> Nothing can stop the grimace. <laughs> but McDonald's is releasing some details about the okay. grimace's origin story. Oh, this is interesting. I do like this. This is fun. So the grimace hails from Grimace Island. Oh, come on! What are we doing? And Already. comes from a huge family that includes. Oh. Grandma Winky, his aunts Millie and Tilly, and Uncle O'Grimacy, who was once the mascot for the Shamrock Shake. I was gonna say, so is Grimace Irish? Okay, maybe. Well, his uncle is maybe through marriage. I I don't know. Marriage, yeah, okay. (laughs) But are you excited to try out the Grimace Shake? I am. I'm annoyed. I got to get this meal. I mean, it's not so crazy. Like, I'll get Shiloh. She eats a 10-piece, so that works out. I'll get her the meal, steal the milkshake. She doesn't like milkshakes, so it's not like I'm taking I'm it sorry, from her. I'm sorry. Your kid doesn't like a milkshake? She is not crazy about ice cream. It, it, it hurts me inside a little bit, but, like, we go to Friendly's, and she's like, uh, you want ice cream? Sometimes Friendly's yes, is sometimes like your no. restaurant. Bro, we go a lot. It's the best. It's you the best. Like when I talk about the Sizzler, which I do quite often on this show, it never really comes up. But like my love for the Sizzler is literally right on level with Gomez's love for Friendlies. Bro, Friendlies is good. It's the best. <laughs> it was so sad. The one by me burned down a couple of years ago. But what did they you do built to it? it up. No, they built it up. There was a fire. It didn't. It wasn't so bad, I guess. Obviously, but oh, they're back and better than ever. I love it. It's always empty. Especially now, they opened the IHOP right across the way. So IHOP is popping off 24-7. And friendly, you just walk in, you eat. takes fucking 10 minutes. Oh, and you get so those good. delicious Sundays at the end. Mmm, Reese's Pieces, baby. The best. But yeah, Shiloh's like, eh. She'll get one with M&M's and just eat the M&M's off. And not eat the, <laughs> eat the milkshake. So I rather just have a, a bag of M&M's. I mean, M and M's are good. Come on, like yeah, 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 they're fine. But like, I don't go to the friendlies to have fucking M and M's. Oh man, I even tried yeah. to get her the clown with the the hat. 
the, the cone hat? Oh, yeah. it's the best. No, nah, she's like, nah. The last time I had friendlies was actually because of Gomez. I was in of New course. York to wrestle for uh, yes. Creator Pro. Gomez picked me up. We picked up our other friend, Dr. Armando. We had some time. Gomez said, oh, you guys want to go get something to eat? We said, sure. All of a sudden, he pulls into the friendlies. <laughs> didn't ask permission. <laughs> didn't ask if this was good. He just pulled right in. <laughs> that friendlies closed, bro. I'm very upset. They're closing everywhere. Like I got like three close to me. Which is like amazing because everywhere else there's like no friendlies. Yeah, it was meant to be the woods. <laughs> uh, so that's the grimace shake. Um, yeah, I'll I'd try like it to out. say I Maybe would. This week. I'm gonna get a YouTube video up, but uh, no promises because I've been. Um, honestly, I just don't have the time. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm a very busy guy right now. I feel like I have a hundred jobs. Let so, me uh, let me let me give you a review. Joe's review. This is fruit. It's shit. And yeah. He throws it on the floor. Like, <laughs> come on. He ain't gonna Fuck like the this. grimace. That's it. Oh, the grimace is disgusting. <laughs> Give me the birdie shake. <laughs> I will. I will try this. Uh, this shake this week, and I'll, I'll let the folks know next week. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh man. Uh, so some some follow up, Gomez. Oh, I like follow ups. We uh, two weeks ago we talked about the American Gladiators documentary. Upcoming yeah, was did. they have a documentary about the building of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. What they also dropped on ESPN this past week was a four part series what? called The Luckiest Guy in the World. I a saw documentary this about Bill Walton. This? Oh, really? Okay. I saw it, the the thing, the, the poster cover art came up. I was like, okay, what's this? All right, interesting. So it was uh, two parts came out on uh, last Tuesday, the 6th, and the final two parts will come out this past Tuesday, the 13th. So by the time you listen to this, all four parts will be available. Uh, Bill Walton, to me, I understand he's like a Hall of Famer, and he had a, if you're a sports fan, he's like a, one of those what-if stories because he had very bad foot injuries for a long time and didn't get to have the maybe illustrious career that he would have had if healthy. I mean, but that happens. Happens But to me, he was just always the enthusiastic uh, pothead basketball commentator guy. Yes, always. always. Oh, would you look at that? Yes. You know, (laughs) and and, and that's good. Um, Yeah. But I don't know that that. I'm necessarily interested in a four-part series about that. I mean, I guess maybe he's very interesting. But right? Don't they say the ones you don't expect? Of course, of course. Right? Yeah, so um, for instance, Dark Side of the Ring this week was Magnum TA. Yeah, I have no interest in that. No, I watched it. Yeah. And it's good. It's good, right? It's not very invasive. And I think with this episode in particular, there's not like that. Here's the dark underbelly of Magnum TA. Like, there's some like not so complimentary things, like he cheated on his wife. But I mean, that's like the most salacious thing in the thing. It's yes. basically just a documentary of, hey, here's this guy who had this meteoric rise and he was about to have the entire world in the palm of his hand. And then he didn't. And be- they go on to say, because of that, that's probably what caused Jim Crockett Promotions, really the head of the NWA at the time to go out of business because Whoa. they had all they their invested. eggs yeah. in the Magnum basket. Yeah. And he was going to be the super duper baby face. He was going to be the guy to unseat Flair. He was going to be their matinee idol to push and promote and be the face of the company. And then when he got into his accident, they had to scramble and didn't, there was no backup plan. So it's, it's one of the great what if stories uh, in the history of wrestling. That's interesting. You had mentioned last week you were wondering how interesting this this episode would be because it's pretty straightforward. But it seems like they, you know, they hit some. It's interesting, it's interesting stuff. in the what if sense, and I think yeah, what ifs can be fun when you I sit there and, and hypothesize. You know, Marvel made a whole show out of it. Yeah, love so it. they are interesting. And when you play the game, I never really took it to that level when it came to Magnum story, because to me, Jim Crockett died from poor asset management. And the fact that Vince was just a lot better at promoting, at growing. Vince didn't care about the territory system. He just went in, took the stars. He had visions of wrestling on a grander scale that I don't think 
anyone no none of them possibly like even that. put in their minds at the time no so to me crockett would have gone out of business regardless but to think that maybe possibly they could have hung fight. around for longer yeah. or been more of a challenger had the magnum plan actually gone through and worked and gotten around maybe they move into different markets maybe they run bigger buildings who knows maybe vince steals him bro maybe vince steals magnum right we get hogan magnum some shit you know who knows hey, at one point vince almost stole flair in like 87 so that's what i'm saying anything's possible because even pritchard tells the story that before there was ted dibiase there was almost the million dollar man rick flair Oh, man, that's crazy. And I guess he was supposed to debut at the original Survivor Series. Crazy. And Flair got cold feet and stayed in uh, stayed in the NWA. It's so funny. That's a crazy what if right there. Although I think it would have been probably like 92, right? He comes, he does it, and he's like, you know, this is... We're gonna, we're well, gonna you got to remember, too, at that point, I think the entire horsemen were um, getting upset with their spots. So eventually Tully and Arn made the move. It probably would have been more impactful had Flair gone with them. Sure. Who knows? Yeah. Imagine now all of a sudden fucking horsemen. There's just horsemen on WWE TV. That would have been crazy. I mean, but that's if they would have used them. They would have never. They would have never. Vince would have never did that. Can't have that shit on my TV. But so that was Dark Side of the Ring. Next week coming up will be the uh, the Graham family. That one I think will be interesting because everyone kind of regards Eddie Graham, who was the mastermind behind uh, Florida Championship Wrestling from Florida for decades, as like one of the great minds in the history of the business. And then there's you know his brother, and they were a big tag team at the time. Vince's favorite wrestler was Dr. Jerry Graham. He wanted, that's why Vince wanted to be a wrestler. His father specifically kept him out of the wrestling business from becoming a wrestler. So I think this has a, a lot of potential if you're like a fan of the history of wrestling. Ooh, all right. You mentioned this uh, Mighty Ducks thing. You watch it, Joe? I did watch it. Um, mm. Did you watch it? I did. I did. I watched it. it. It's like a 45 minute thing. Yeah. But- because it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't like a, a real for 30. thirty for thirty. It wasn't. Yeah. It said E sixty when I saw it. Oh, That's what it I was. didn't even yeah. realize that. That's because I was like, oh, because when I clicked, it, I said, oh, so like, it was like fifty minutes. Yeah, it was like 45, 50 minutes. So it wasn't. But you know, I thought it was cool because uh, it documented a time, obviously the beginning, but then it goes into the playoff run, and the playoff run is you know we're prime hockey time there, like. Watching the Mighty Ducks, like we're going crazy watching this this run, and I remember being, you know, that age, going, "Oh my, yo, this fucking Shabir, what was it? Uh, what's this guy's name? The John Sebastian Jaguar. John Sebastian Jaguar, amazing. He was doing crazy shit, and I remember being in that moment, and I was like, "Oh wow, this was a fun time. This guy was yeah. being in- insane." So that yeah, was fun. Was, I found it to be very. Kind of short, very. They rush through it. They and they through rush stuff. through so much. Yeah, I just the aspect of Disney deciding to get into the the game, right, and having a team is kind of ridiculous on its own. Like I, I guess Disney now could buy the whole league if they wanted. You know they what do I whatever mean? They wanted, yeah, exactly. But like back then, the idea of Disney deciding, hey, we're gonna buy a hockey team, you know, just uh-huh. and, and for a while they own the Angels too. Remember. How how about just the city of Anaheim building a, a, an arena with nothing nothing with in nothing it. to just, put in it? Just I guess we're gonna have concerts ten days a year. Like what the f- that's Towns, insane. Like it sounds insane, but a lot of cities do this because they want to attract conventions or the ice capades, the circus, or sure. Disney on Ice. They want those events. They want those concerts. It's good for tourism. It helps jobs. Uh, sure. You know. One of the big reasons the Tampa Bay Rays exist is because they built that Tropicana Stadium. I think at the time it was called the Sun Dome. Uh, They built that stadium thinking that they were about to woo the San Francisco Giants into moving. Oh my! Like in the early 90s, there was a legitimate thing where the Giants were about to pick up and move to Tampa if the city didn't pay for a new stadium. That's a what if right there, bro. And crazy. Even as a kid, like I remember 
like being 10 years old, like with my friends from school who traded baseball cards with each other, like, oh, we should buy some San Francisco Giants hats. They're going to be worth money someday when they move. (laughs) Like that was a real thing. And the reason MLB really put the Rays in Tampa or the Devil Rays as they were, you know, came into the league in 98 was almost out of like, all right, we kind of fucked you around. So here's your team now. That's crazy. Because when they said that, I was like, that just seems insane. Like, I guess, like, you would have – but even that, like, at least uh, you have a team playing 80 games, you know, that's a big difference. Well, that's 80 dates. Think about – at least an arena you can find use for. You can if you have a stuff. big enough metropolitan center that can draw people and in, sure, you can Anaheim have concerts. Is, yeah. You could do the fucking monster trucks. You can do yes. the car show, the boat show, the – you know, there are things that will come through and travel. The – Home Builders Association Conference of, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, sure. Like, there's all these sorts of <laughs> events you can put in an arena-type setting. It's just, like, when you build a fucking football stadium, like the city of St. Louis built that stadium for the Rams, the yeah. Rams decide to up and leave. Like, what the fuck do you put there? There's yeah, only... Maybe do three concerts a year? Uh, there's, there's only so many year. Taylor Swifts that can fill yeah. that size of a building. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. This It's true. There's not a lot of stadium shows. Uh, only a couple of year. So this documentary does get. I I thought they knocked it out of the park with the guests. Yes. Because from the movie side, they get the guy who wrote it and his roommate at the time. They get uh, old archive footage of Emilio Estevez. The story about where the guy got the name Gordon Bombay from popped me big. He was like just sitting up at night drinking and drinking and drinking. And he had two gin bottles right above him on the shelf. So, so when he looked funny. over, it said Gordon. And the next one said Bombay. And he's like, yeah, that's the guy's name now. So funny. Bro. Brilliant. That had- was a lunatic, bro. Trying to write this. He's like, I just got to write this movie. He's, he's like, like he, oh. he's, he had, once he came up with the idea, <laughs> so crazy. he believed so heavy in it. Like, yeah. it really seemed to consume his life. Took over his life, it seemed I like. I have yeah. to get this on paper. Like, crazy. the world needs this Mighty Ducks movie. <laughs> we need Charlie Conway, baby. <laughs> you know, they had Goldberg the goalie, who's obviously been in the news recently sure. for his uh, addiction issues. Look pretty good. Looking All, better, yes. Yeah. Yes, looking much better. They had Marguerite Moreau, who played Connie Love Moreau in the movie. And for a while, she it. would be like a, a girlfriend of the week or something on like Boy Meets World or whatever. And every time she would come on, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Yeah, of course, bro. You know, and she still looks good. And she's, you know, in her, her, yeah. she, I mean, she's about my age, I think. She but, looks the same, yeah. just older. Super cute. So, and then from the duck side, the actual hockey side, they, they had got the everybody. stars. They got they had the everybody. Yeah. Hall of Famers, Paul Korea and Tamu Solani. They got Mike Madano, who filmed that one little clip yeah, in the original scene. Mighty Ducks movie. They had I people... had forgotten about Paul Korea. I remember uh, for... I for... I just remembered uh Timu for some reason. Okay. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my god, Paul Korea was the guy, not this guy. Like I was like, oh my god. And then I just like, wow, this is it was awesome. You know, and Paul stepped away from the ducks for a long time. Like he wanted nothing to do with the team. And when he finally came back into the fold, you know, just a couple of years ago, it was like a big deal for the duck fan base that he finally came back and they were going to retire his number and everything. And then went to the hall of fame. So for you guys who are early nineties kids, like I would say, this is perfect. Go check this out. Like this is, yes. I don't think it's, it's not like the best documentary ever. Like I said, it does feel rushed, but you get like the Disney side of things. You get some movie stuff and you get some pro sports stuff and yeah. what the team meant at the time. One of the more interesting things I thought was that Disney, their expansion fee to get this team was $50 million. The Seattle Kraken, who just came into the league two years ago, their expansion fee to get into the league, $750 million. It's insane. Sports teams are insane nowadays, bro. So I, I looked it up. The, uh, the Ducks money. right now How much are worth, uh, I believe, $726 million. Yeah, and that's like a franchise that's done nothing. Like yeah, that's the... and that's kind of low on the franchise scale. Like the Ottawa Senators are up for sale right now, and the rumor is they're going to sell for a billion dollars. What are the Senators done, bro? Literally nothing. What are the – and Ottawa, too. In, like Ottawa Senators – what do we do? <laughs> it's great. Yeah, no, documentary is great. 
like I said, it's like 20 minutes for each thing. It starts with the, the movie, goes into Disney buying it, and then it goes on to actual hockey Some stuff. of the Disney theatrics that they had oh to like introduce God, the team. Oh, my God. That first game was ridiculous. <laughs> when they showed the clip of the mascot Wild Wing trying to jump the – through the hoop of fire or something, and he just like <laughs> lands on it, and you just see all the assistants trying to pat him, make sure his costume doesn't oh. catch on fire. <laughs> so funny! Oh, I love it. It's a good time. Check it out. So ESPN Plus, right? Who knows? Yeah, when you it... can watch it on ESPN Plus. Yeah, I don't think I, it makes me bad. want one of those uh, the classic eggplant Mighty Ducks jerseys, though. I love though. I always love those jerseys. I always I, love that. I, I really don't like when they changed from the Mighty Ducks to the Ducks and went to that at that orange and black. And they've had their greatest success yeah. in those uniforms now, so that'll be sure. it forever. They won their one Stanley Cup in those uniforms and those jerseys. But man, like that Mighty Ducks logo was so it. badass at the time. Lo- always loved that shit. You're talking about when that logo came out and the team started and all the merch, the starter jackets, the jerseys. People who had no interest in hockey were rocking Mighty Ducks gear. Oh, hell yeah. Did and you I watch think they the... even mentioned in the documentary, they were like the number one merchandise seller in all of sports at the time. I believe it. Did you watch the cartoon, the Mighty Duck cartoon? I've seen episodes of it. I blogged a few episodes of it back in the day on Um, But did I ever watch it religiously? No. No, I never got into it. Like, it was cool. I was like, oh, this is cool. And I just never. But the star of the show is Wild Wing, who's the team mascot. That's great. That's a good. That's good. Oh, man. Love it. All right. Look at us. Sports documentaries every week. We love it. Keep them coming, bro. Of course, keep them coming. We have varied interests. So, you know, we get to scratch a lot of itches with the wrestling documentaries, the sports documentaries, the grimace milkshakes. (laughs) A lot to talk about this week. Oh, yes, there is, bro. What, uh, you watch any stuff this week, Joe? Gomez, I did, outside of all that, I I really didn't do much because I did have company this weekend, so I was entertaining. Sure. But uh, I did find some time to go out and do the extra credit. Oh, this fucking guy. (laughs) I did not. (laughs) I figured you didn't because we didn't talk about it at all through the week. Um, Last week we said maybe, possibly, could be, We'll hit up Transformers Rise of the Beasts in theaters now. And I did. I went to see Transformers Rise of the Beast. Ooh, uh, I would classify my interest level as a two and a half out of five. Oh, out I, of five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not overly hyped for this. I mean, I want to see it. I'll probably see it. But I'm not like knocking down the doors of the movie theaters to get in here like Phil Rizzuto yeah. used to with the Hall of Fame. Let me in. Let <laughs> me in. Like, that's not me. That's a very old joke. You got to be of a certain so age. Old, to pre- bro. <laughs> you got to be of a certain age to appreciate that one. Uh... Um, Transformers, $61 million opening weekend at the box office. Oh, that's not bad at all. $190 million budget. <laughs> I understand, but it's not like these these movies ain't like no one cares about these movies no more. No, so sixty one seems like a lot to me. I figured I, I think that's a good million. a good start. Um, yeah, honestly, I think Spider Man's still number one, right? That too. Spider Man only had like a fifty percent drop. Spider Man is, and it's it's great. And like yeah, we said, I saw last it again. Week, Oh, yeah, you did? I went back. I, I did went you back see 3D or something this time? No, I just saw it in IMAX again. The 3D didn't work, but I took my wife because she had to see it. So good. Loved it even more. It's just fantastic. So what I didn't know about this Transformers movie, now I know, like we said, it's the Beast Wars time. Yeah. I have no real connection to Beast Wars. Oh, you, you didn't know it was in the 90s, did you? I didn't know that this is, in yeah. essence, a prequel. <laughs> like a prequel. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, it's set in 1994. The soundtrack yeah. is all like mid '90s hip hop, which like freshman Must year Joe was Must like great. cash rules everything around me, cream so get good. the money, dollar dollar. Bill. I was loving it. I Love was it. loving it, and I was like, oh my god! I hope people don't watch because like every time like a new song will come on, I'd be like, <sighs> and then start nodding <laughs> my head like I like yeah, I just couldn't help it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You feeling it, baby? <laughs> Uh, Pete Davidson is, I guess, what they're pushing I in this movie. I saw he did a voice or something. He's doing right? the voice of Mirage, who was an original 
Transformer and Autobot. How'd he do? He's fine. It's fine. Yeah, like he's. He doesn't sound I, distracting because he has a no, very kind of. Like, to me, voice. I don't hate Pete David. I know it's like popular to hate. Oh Pete no, Davidson, he's fine. But like he doesn't bother me or anything, and I think for this role and the way they wrote it, he's it's just fine. Okay. Now I will say, the story is not the best. First off, you're going in expecting a Transformers Beast Wars movie, and after the yeah, oh that's upsetting to hear. So you get this like introductory part at the beginning where you see them, yeah, and then it becomes like a regular Transformers movie. And the storyline is ungodly similar to the first trans- Michael Bay Transformers movie with the Allspark. There's just a new energy beacon sure. thing yeah, that substitutes thing for the get. Allspark that yeah, now we have thing. to make sure to keep out of the hands of the bad guys and destroy. And now we'll never get back to Cybertron. Um, so the movie's entertaining enough if you like the robots if you like seeing the action uh, the fight scenes are okay it? yeah cuz it's different it's no michael bay so it's going to be a little different i want yeah to... like there's there's some cool stuff but nothing like jumps off the page at you everything is just at best like fine enough sure. um but and i won't spoil this but there is a tease at the end oh no i wanted to talk about this this is the only thing i care about i know okay so i didn't know this was coming yeah okay so i see what i'm interested in is how they do it because to me the other thing is even in a worse place than transformers you know transformers yes. is like not so good uh we're going to spoil it here gi joe franchise is like who the fuck cares bro <laughs> But who has when it actors? comes to a toy with the toys right now, G.I. Joe's super hot. Sure. They're always hot, though, aren't they? But, like, we're getting this big resurgence of G.I. Joe right now. Classified figures, Super 7 doing ultimate figures. I don't know what's going on with the three and three-quarter inch line anymore. It looks like they're trying to phase that out. But G.I. Joe is hot right now. People sure. are talking about G.I. Joe. People are buying G.I. Joe. We just had, like, the 40th anniversary of G.I. Joe. So G.I. Joe... And it's a franchise that prints money when it wants to. You know, last week we talked about Silverhawks and how it's very niche. Yeah. And there isn't like enough to really push that kind of Silverhawks reboot or anything. G.I. Joe is something that's going to get sure, multiple opportunities. Yeah. Yes, it always gets a shot. Yeah, 100%. So at the end of the movie, the kid who was from, uh, he played in the Heights. Yeah, yeah. And Anthony he's the, Ramos. He, yes, he's the star of this movie. And he's got like a engineering kind of background. Was in the military, and at the end, he he's trying to get a job to help support his family and you know his, help his mom's out with the bills. And he gets called in for this interview, and it turns out like the guy is like he brought him here under suspicious circumstances and knows all about his shit with the mm. Transformers. And he's like, well, if you ever change your mind, why don't you give us a call? He hands him a business card, and when the kid looks at the business card, it says GI Joe on it. And I fucking went, ooh. Okay. Because I was wondering, because I'm like, they don't have a character. They don't have any actors that will make you pop. Unless, I guess, fucking Snake Eyes, you know, shit like, who else Here are you going to pop? Here we go with fucking you know? Snake Eyes again. You know? Like, I'm trying to think. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. I was like, is fucking Snake Eyes at the end of this movie? Like, how do they? All right, so a little business call with a logo. All right. All right. I wonder if that movie's going to get made. I would think it would have to. Just because I want to see it. How do you think that works? Like, they got like what, the robots are fighting army men. Like, what? what it was a comic this? book crossover series. Did you read? Is it any good? I've never like, read. What's it. the? I'm still I'm sure in the middle they, of the original GI Joe story. I'm sure they. But they now fight I'm wondering. Team up. I, I think it's great for Hasbro. Obviously, you know you can intertwine your your licenses easy. Uh, these are two big time intellectual properties, right? That you're intertwining. Yeah. Transformers is still a big deal. We still it get is. tons of new Transformers toys all the time that are just reissues of the same classic G1 Transformers. Do you know how many goddamn 1984 Optimus Prime figures have come out in the last five years? Like, probably 9,000. And people still That's buy good. them because, oh, Gotta he, have it. he does one more thing joint of articulation articulates somewhere different <laughs> i love it there's one where you talk to it and you see like if you say like 
Oh, Optimus yeah, Prime remember. transform. Like it he gets up and transforms. That's awesome, though. It's incredible. And Transformers always sell. G.I. Joe's always sell. So I, I hope they find a way to do this movie. What I'm interested in is for years they've talked about a crossover between G.I. Joe and Mask, which yeah. is another niche 80s That's cartoon niche. Oh, yeah. mobile armored strike command. I just tried doing a episode a day of this on cardjomez.com with reviews. No show. <laughs> I, as a kid, I was not a fan of it. I, and when I say I just didn't watch it as a kid, sure. Um, but it had very cool toys. The toy line for Mask is awesome. It's still awesome. If you put it up against other '80s toy lines, man, this is fucking cool. You got awesome vehicles, play sets, figures. A pe- they exist in the GI Joe universe, though. Like Matt Tracker, who is the head of the Mask. He's a character in GI Joe eventually, and they eventually made a GI Joe figure of him. So I want to see maybe they weave this in, probably not at first, but maybe on a smaller level, they just call a character tracker or something like that. Maybe I would yeah. be interested to see if they do that. Interesting. All right, well, we'll be there. You know, we'll be there open a day if they ever make this fucking Look, movie. I went and saw the Snake Eyes movie. And I, I, I knew I shouldn't have. Yeah. I knew it was. I didn't realize how bad it was going to be. So bad, bro. But it's literally one of the worst movies of all time. It's so, not quite so. Skinnamarink bad, but it's up there. What are <laughs> you saying, bro? How could you say that? Skinnamarink is your favorite movie of the year. Is that this year? Yes, it is. It was fucking background in this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was this. <laughs> My God, that feels like ten years ago. It's because. It, it should feel that way because it is not a good movie. Bro. Uh, Transformers Rise of the Beast. At the end of the day, double Ooh, main man. man. I mean, it's not the worst thing. It could uh, could be better, but, you know, not so bad. Uh, this last G.I. Joe movie, that Snake Eyes movie, made $28 million domestically. Yikes. Bro. 40 worldwide. So GI Joe needs to do something because it ain't working. <sighs> they put their fir- their big character right, Snake Eyes, their main man, gave him his own movie, and nobody cared. It made thirteen million opening. But is this a pandemic thing, right? When did this? Come I, out? It, it was kind of it's at kind that of, point. I, mean, it I don't been, think. Right? It, yeah, July twenty twenty one. So it's like things are starting to open up again, but still. Other movies are making money at that time. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. It's, look, it's just not good. It, it's just not. And the marketing behind it wasn't good. The trailers behind it weren't good. Nothing about this said, hey, you know what? You got to go see fucking G.I. Joe origin Snake Eyes. Nothing looked appealing about that movie. And I, I still went and saw it anyway against my better judgment. And it sucked. And then I and watched I told it at people, home. I told people, yes, do not do your... this. <laughs> I went against your word. I watched it at home, and you yelled at me. It's very sad. You yelled at me for watching Two Snake Eyes. Two hours of your life gone. I know. When I die, I go, I could have had two more hours of living, but I watched Snake Eyes, bro. But I watched Snake Eyes. <laughs> uh, what else did you get up to this week, Gomez? Uh, so I started uh, a series. I'm going to wait and talk about that in a week or two when I get some more episodes in. But it's an old series. I'm catching up with something. Uh, but I did. A, I started a rewatch of a movie series because uh, some people were talking about it. Police Academy. This, yeah, I did Police Academy. I'm watching the Police Academy movie. Are you right? really? Yes, I am. <laughs> I watched Police Academy 1, Police Academy 2. I, I cannot believe this. <laughs> Are you being serious? Yes, you can look at my letterbox. <laughs> the go is, I've watched two episodes. That's what I'm talking about. Fully, I decided to rewatch the Police Academy series, a series that I grew up loving. Police Academy was my shit. I had the toys from the TV show. From the, from the cartoon, yeah. I loved it, bro. So I'm like, is this going to hold up? 100%. You, 
So the first one, I never was a big fan of the first one because really? for me, I I watched all the other ones. Okay, and they were on was, um, network TV all the they time. They were all on network TV, and then one day, Little Gomez rented the R-rated Police Academy. Boy, oh boy, was that fun! <laughs> but it wasn't the first one. Isn't as silly as the other one. So, like, Correct. I grew up watching uh, Miami Citizens on Patrol, like, yeah. and they're fucking very silly. So the first one is it's it's not great. The second <sighs> one, it ups the silly, and it's a little better. But I'm still not loving it. I'm hoping three and four is where it's at. I'm hoping. I'm gonna watch it really? tomorrow. I'll be back next week to talk about the rest of them. So I'm a little a few, nervous. A few years ago, I when I just moved to Tampa, I went to Walmart like the first day to pick up, you know, some essentials. And I didn't have like cable or anything yet. But uh, I said, let me, I walk through the $5 DVD bin and see if there's anything in here. You know, rather than rewatch something I've, you know, I already have and probably don't want to, you know, I'm not in the mood for. I just want something new, right? Sure. And there was... Uh, police academy you get four movies on one disc you know it had like two on each side i was like here we go <laughs> and that night i watched police academy one and i laughed oh gomez how i laughed i love that first police academy movie i never watched the other ones after that I, what? I, I, I spent five dollars that day just to watch Police Academy one that one time. Well, I mean, five dollars for one movie is not bad either. No, because we pay like fifteen bucks to go to the movies now. Yeah, and you want to buy it? It's usually two, three dollars, so it's not too terrible back so, then. But man, uh... that part one, I love it. Do you have a favorite character in Police Academy? Who's your Who's your boy? Oh, um, well, Mahoney, obviously, because he's a troublemaker, sure. you know? He's he is a, a troublemaker. Yeah. I was yeah. always, I always loved Tackleberry. I don't know why. Tackleberry always cracked me up. <laughs> Tackle, Tackleberry did, but um, Hightower would have been like my number two guy. Hightower was great too. I love Hightower, bro. Oh, and, I love and, Bobcat. Yeah. <laughs> But like I the guy who did the sounds, what was his name? Sure, I forget his name. In the because thing. just the yeah. fact that he could do those sounds when you're a kid is like the coolest thing. But it's always like the stupidest shit. It's like he's in a restaurant and he's making the guy chew loudly. <laughs> 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 oh, because the guy's shoes are squeaking. It's embarrassing now. <laughs> his shoes are squeaking. Oh no. <laughs> Like, I just thought that, like, this because this guy can make a a siren sound. I was like, oh man, what a talent! So funny. Uh, yeah, so I, I, like I said, I I have high hopes for the next two movies. These were my shit, especially Miami. I loved Miami growing up, so (laughs) I'm excited. I love it. (laughs) Uh, but that's it. I didn't really, uh, I didn't watch much there. Like I said, I went and saw. Across the Spider Verse again, still good, still great. Wow. So that was my week, except for one other thing we watched. So why don't we get into that? <laughs> oh, baby, here we go. The Incredible Hulk returns, nineteen eighty eight, baby. Oh, so wow. this is the movie the wheel landed on this week. We said we didn't know if we'd get the Transformers. Only one of us did the assignment, but. We said, watch along with us. The Incredible Hulk returns from 1988. It was on Tubi. Yes. And Gomez, first things first. I logged into Tubi. I went into the search. And I started typing in Incredible. You're crazy. You should have just wrote Hulk. That's what I did. I wrote Hulk. Well, whatever. It comes right up. Okay. What that also comes right up what is the, the trial of the Incredible Hulk. That's that's the next one, yeah. And there are more of these movies. This is the first of three, yeah. The three first of, of three. There is yeah. three these made big for deals, TV bro. incredible Hulk movies. I don't remember this for oh, shit. We were a big Incredible Hulk fan. We loved the show. So when they announced these movies, like it was a big, oh, the Incredible Hulk movies on. Like it was a big deal, bro. So I'm looking at this going 1988. When you hit play, you get basically the opening credits, the opening scene from the show, which ended in 1982. So I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. How poor is this fucking movie? 
It's just an episode. <laughs> and it really is just an episode. I am like, I couldn't believe like technology in Hulkland did not advance in the time since the show went off the air to the Hell time no. they filmed The Incredible Hulk Returns. It Insane. probably was worse. The budget probably went down bringing the show back after all these years. <laughs> and this was, like I said, a TV movie aired on NBC 35 years ago, just a couple weeks ago, May 22nd, 1988. We'd be hitting those anniversaries on the I wheel, it. trying to tell us something. I love it. <laughs> and it did very well. Ratings, I would think so, were through the roof, which is why we got these other fucking two movies. Yes, sir. But. This was also supposed to be a backdoor pilot for an unproduced series that would have starred Thor. So that's so crazy to me because who the fuck wants to watch an episode like this? This version of Thor is so terrible. Oh. Who is watching this fucking version? This is a real version. Like this does happen in the comics where Thor is summoned by the hammer. Like, this is a thing that happens for a little bit in the comics. Nobody likes this part of the comics. <laughs> and they decide, this is the Thor we need to do. And let's make it, oh, what a terrible show that would have been. Right? So in this movie, Thor is not as guardian, nor is he a god. He's simply described as a long-dead Viking king who has been denied entrance from Valhalla for his arrogance. He's got no powers. And he's got no powers. <laughs> and he's got to like do a bunch of good deeds basically before he can be allowed into Valhalla. Ridiculous. And it's like, it's like mentioned that he's the son of Odin, but everyone's like, ah, he's just fucking drunk or whatever. Yes. Uh, they don't believe it. So the IMDB description of this movie. Going okay. Back. Let's see. On the verge of curing his Hulk condition. Sure. David Banner meets his colleague Donald Blake, who is mystically linked to a Viking warrior, Thor. Why did this guy look for... He, he needs a, like a, a Norse mythology professor. Why does he need Banner here? Like, wh what, what, what is the... Now, I guess I never watched the Incredible Hulk TV series. But at the beginning of this movie, it is explained that David Banner has faked his death. So I'm assuming yes. that's how the series ended. He's faked his death and tries to go into seclusion, and he creates a new personality for himself. That's, he's David Banyan now. That's every episode of The Hulk is that. He's he's on the lam with a fake name in a new town. Okay. Doing wow. Something. Yeah. That's every episode. So <laughs> Okay. So right off the bat, I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah, but like that's the way I'm like looking at this. Sure, story. I get it. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming he faked his death. That's how they ended the show, and now he's he's a new scientist, hot on the trail. That apparently he's got no background on anything, but they just let this guy into fucking labs where he could work they on gamma do, radiation. They let people science anytime. Hey, you want a science? Come in here, bro. I'm gonna fake my death and be Michael Gomez. -y. Like, what kind of fucking <laughs> terrible thing? Like. <laughs> It's like Bang when Mr. In. Burns put on the mustache and he's like, my name is Mr. Snurb. Like, what do we do? What a terrible fake name, bro. Oh. Uh, so he's working on the thing. This guy, Donald Blake, who in the comics is Thor's like alter ego. Yeah. But here they're two separate people. Donald Blake recognizes David Banner from when he took a... a lecture at you know so mit or yeah. whatever fucking school well, and he's like he's like yeah Damn, i knew nation. that you're the guy to see for this he's like we uncovered the tomb of the viking king thor and he pulls out the hammer he's like i took this and watch this and he goes odin and all of a sudden thor appears like a fucking genie only he doesn't grant any wishes he just pisses off david banyan who then it turns into the hulk and then they're like ah oh, you are david banner aren't you Ooh. and then you yell odin again and he fucking disappears what uh what's blake's problem what just let this guy out like what what what's what's the real issue here i don't understand any like, of the motivation for donald like, blake whatsoever like, it makes no sense you control thor thor is literally your servant here because you control when he shows up you control when he disappears 
You control what he can and cannot do while he's here because at any moment, you just have to yell Odin and hold the hammer aloft, which blew me away because I've never yes, known. Everybody picking up the hammer. Everybody yeah. can pick up the hammer like it ain't no thing. And I'm yeah. just like, wait a minute, yes, what? A different, that's what I mean. Like of all the versions of Thor, they picked like, it's so silly. So there is just so much I do not understand about this movie. And it, it goes to the end where eventually Banner destroys the uh, gamma radiation thing he's been working on, even though it's going to cost him his opportunity to cure himself from being the Hulk. Of course, bro. My goodness. This movie is just... We get a, a really cool shootout. I, I guess it's really cool where uh, David Banner or David Banyan's girlfriend gets kidnapped because... They gotta do something. Think, you gotta do because you gotta go somewhere with this show. It's like wrong place, wrong time. Like there's like a whole like B plot of just like it just so happens these bad guys are doing this thing that has nothing to do with these other people, but they get roped into it. It's like so silly. And this and, poor woman who just wants to she just wants to do science and be in love, and she can't do either. She wants to do David Banner. She they're very horny for each other, the two of these people. They're and I the appreciate phone. that. They're like, oh, come touch this soft pussy, basically. She's like, he's like, <laughs> bro, he's like, he's like, hey, I'm working on the machines. And she's like, oh, there's something soft you can, you work, can work on this on. machine. And then she's like, yeah, I do like that soft thing. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, bro, go home and take care of that, bro. What a horny Hulk. <laughs> it's like, geez. This fuck already. Get it over with and get back to science. Oh. Why the Hulk got to hold up a, a, a trash can or whatever to block bullets? What are we doing? Thor picks up a trash can lid and goes, this will do. And he uses it as a shield like it's going to stop real bullets. It's a what? fucking aluminum trash can lid that Raven has bent over the fucking Big Show's head at WrestleMania. Like, it fucking is paper thin, yet it's stopping bullets oh. for this. Not even a god. He's like, it's not even like he's real Thor where bullets won't pierce his skin. It's so stupid, bro. This movie is so stupid. <laughs> oh. I gotta say, at the very least, it'll make you think. <laughs> <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> oh, man. It, you were it makes me in interested to go back to watch the, the show. One. Oh, okay. We can watch the other movies. I'll put them on the wheel, bro. Well, I, I will say that. I see the other movies up there on Tubi, and I'm going, oh, no. Because I, I figured there's more spots on the wheel. Like, we got to constantly fill spots now. And I'm going, oh, no, God. We don't fill spots. We only take them out. The next movie, The Trial of the Hulk, that has Daredevil. Daredevil's the lawyer. So that's cool. You get to see uh, Matt Murdock do some stuff. He's a really good lawyer. I don't know. We'll be the judge of that once you watch it. Well, I'm sure it's not a version of Daredevil that I'm indoctrinated to. This one's not blind. Like <laughs> it's just <laughs> he, he's actually he's like just... a carbon copy of Disco Stew from The Simpsons. <laughs> just a regular old lawyer doing backflips in the alley. Oh man, what a movie, Joe! <laughs> Gomez, hit the music. Are you a man? A double main man? Are you a man? A triple main man? A man, man, man? A quadruple main man? Are you a man? Are you a man? All right, Joe. The Incredible Hulk Returns from 1988, available on Tubi for anyone interested. Where's this fall on your main man standards? Yeah. It, it's just, it's so interesting to take a look back in time and like the, the Incredible Hulk TV show Which is iconic. Huge thing. Yeah. Huge thing. One of the most famous characters. Absolutely. And as someone who grew up loving the Batman 66 series, you would think that I'm all in for sure. that kind of level of camp, you know, and like, chicanery and nonsense and like stuff that just doesn't look good you know like i'm okay with that i can accept it i was 
taken aback by how poor everything looked for the time. Like 1988 doesn't feel that long ago. Sure, like, but it is at the same time. I it think. is at the you know we don't because we grew up. So to us, it's like you know, but you know that was state of the art at that time. We're only at that point. We're only a year away from the Keaton Batman movie. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's, and that's so <laughs> different looking. You know what? Like God. Um, this movie's not good. It's I'm not gonna sit here and, and everything is bad about it. From the effects to the script, the, the acting is not great. The story makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But this is probably one of the better real movies we've gotten in a while because it's so recalculous that you can't help but sit there and go, but but what the fuck? Like, you're you're entertained by how bad it is. And that's what, like, this has that uh, Superman didn't have for me. Like, at okay. least I can be entertained by the badness here. Whereas yeah. with Superman, I went in expecting a certain level of, I, I don't know, goodness? Any yeah. level of goodness? And I didn't get that at all in Superman. At least here, I can be entertained by the badness. I guess because my expectations were low going in. Sure. So I'm going to give it one and a half main men. <laughs> I love it. It's still um, not good. Like, don't go in here expecting a good movie. But go in here, laugh about how fucking piss poor the portrayal of Thor is. Laugh about how the script makes no sense. Laugh about how horny uh, David Banyan and, and his girlfriend are for each other. <laughs> laugh about how these crooks, I don't even know what their motivation is and all I, they so want. Silly. But yet they, they hijack a police helicopter and show up at David Banyan's beach house. The pipeline is right by the beach or something. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to give it a one and a half also. Uh, it's not very good, but you can get lots of enjoyment from the stupidness. It's just so stupid, but but good. <laughs> so uh, I would love to hear from you guys if you watched it uh, yes, during the please. week on Tubi or if you love you loved it as a kid, you grew up watched with. it before. Yeah. If you're a fan of the Hulk series, let us know why. Let us know what it is that you like about it, why you uh, or if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it. Uh, definitely, you know, leave some comments on YouTube or, you know, Twitter or whatever. We have all of that stuff for you guys to reach out. Yes. Uh, there's no superhero wheel this week, Joe. Oh, thank goodness. Because the big movie this week, finally, this movie is finally coming out, Joe. The Flash. It's finally here, bro. Now, a few months back, when this movie, they were like forcing it, you know, with all the problems that... Uh, what was this actor's name? Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller. Well, that Ezra Miller was having, they were like, no, we got to release this movie. And we started hearing that this yeah. movie was absolutely incredible. And yep, that's, that's why it head. had to come out. It had to come out. They now, as we've gotten closer movie. to this date, Gomez, it seems that the reviews have become a lot more mixed. It's, it, But it's one of those... The, the people are going in talking about it's the biggest trash they ever saw, and then people are saying it's the best thing ever. There's no middle ground for this movie, so I'm sure that's where we'll probably land. I'm sure. Me and you, we'll be like, yeah. Well, it's it was fine. fine. It was fine. It had some cool stuff, had some stupid stuff. I'm sure because it's so it's so over the top. The hate and the love seems a little too much, you know. So let's so see. the Flash will be in theaters this week. Definitely go check that out. Yeah, baby. I got my tickets Thursday night. I'm excited. I do not get my tickets in advance. Well, it's a Thursday opening night, so I have to, you know, it's going to be sold out. There's no such thing as sellouts here. You don't think if you went Thursday, like 8 o'clock or something, it wouldn't sell out? I don't think so. Really? That's crazy. I feel I like have, a Friday night In the night time I've lived here, I have never been to any movie that I've ever feared selling out. Sure, but we like we we talked offline. We do go at off hours. We like to head those matinees up. No, but even like for Avengers, like I want to be at the first screening of Avengers. You know what I mean? 
Okay. I don't want anything to spoil it for me. Sure, I want to yeah, get man. out there. That's as why soon I'm as doing possible. the flash. I've been dodging the spoilers like the flash over here. But what I've also yeah. learned is as long as I don't go looking for them, sure. I usually don't have them thrown in my face. So like I just I know what people are complaining about, but I don't know to the extent. Like people complain about cameos in the movie. Mm-hmm. And but I don't I have an idea based off ways people are talking, but I don't know for sure. You know? So we'll That's see. Fair. But I, I've I have found that in my own way that I navigate the internet and social media, unless I go looking for something to be spoiled, it usually doesn't come across. I would say nine times out of ten. And that's enough for me where I'm like, eh, I'm good. I could take the chance and go Saturday morning instead of sure. Friday night. The the thing that messes stuff up now is that damn for you tab because it's people oh, okay, you yeah. got you you know, I don't I don't know this jerk off, but uh, he's a spoiling best, you know, that's what he does. Mm. And I'm this right in my face. So that doesn't help. So I try to get the fuck over there real fast before yeah. then. So yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. We'll see. So uh no superhero wheel, but we do have a wheel to spin, Joe. So we should probably hit some music. Hitting it. It's now time for the big finish. All right, Joe. It's big finish time. You ready? As ready as I'm going to be. Let's spin it. This is good. this is a bad one for Joe. I should have took this off. I'm sorry. Uh, today's big finish, fruity candy. What's your favorite fruity candy, Joseph? I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, none of them. Uh, <laughs> Starburst, I guess. Delicious Starburst Skittles. Mm. A Laffy Taffy. With the little sparkles on top. I, I if this counts, this is gonna be my number one. Let me hear. Swedish right. fish. 100 percent That's a fruity candy. That's the that's a great one. Yeah. Often slept on. I always forget about it, but then I'll buy one every once in a while and go, yo, Swedish fish, where you been all my life? Right? I'd like, but then I buy the bag that's too big, and then I end up eating Swedish <laughs> fish for a week, and I'm like, I didn't need this many Swedish fish. You know they make flavors now. You can get different flavors uh, of Swedish fish. Flavors. I just want it the gets one crazy. Yeah. I want the red. There's a couple other ones that aren't bad. But That's like when that it, red. with Tootsie Rolls. Like I, every oh, Halloween. Oh, I love. No, I want every, the fl- every I, Halloween. I would get like one of the like a couple of the white Tootsie Rolls, and I'd give be like, me the vanilla. Oh yes. my god! But then when you get a whole bag of them, you're like, I didn't need this. You get the assorted, the lime, and that too. You know, they I don't, got I don't like the other of one. that too. I don't like the lime or the orange one. Love no. the lime, cherry. They got a grape now. They got a green apple, a blue raspberry. Fucking mm. candy, bro. It's the best. Oh, so I'm going to go Swedish fish number one, Skittle, uh, Starburst number two. I'm not a big Skittles guy. Never really was. Um, number three, I wouldn't say so much today, but when I was in like junior high, it was like the coolest candy out there. So I'm going to say Airheads. Airheads a good one. I love an Airhead. We get them sometimes with like uh, Shiloh Kid parties, like a... It's like a quick, easy. They're at Party City for like fucking ten cents. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, you get a grab bag from a party, and it's uh, it's got some Laffy Taffy in there. Mm-mm-mm. Laffy Taffy, ooh, ooh, that Laffy Taffy. So uh, I'll go. I mean, we got to go Starburst. I mean, I would pick Starburst. You know, the red ones, the favorite reds, bro. That's I love that bag. Uh, but we'll go regular Starburst because I do love. Some some lemon, some orange. Mm-mm-mm. I might not do Skittles. We're not gonna do Skittles. We're gonna mix it up. Number two is gonna be Kazoozles. Also oh, known Kazoozles. As, yeah. Also known as uh sweet tart ropes are the names that you would see now in the supermarket. That's what they're called. Delicious, wonderful candy. And number three, I'm gonna go with gummy lifesavers, but the purple bag. Ooh. That's it. 
I could go on for all day, bro. We could do three hours just we'll on do candy. A, a bonus episode about fruity candy one day. Oh my god, the sour count because sour Skittles. Oh, the sour patch kids would count. They're still fruity. Oh, kids. sour patch. Oh my god. They're so good. I need candy now, bro. I'll kill them. I gotta go fuck a seven. Oh, candy, now. bubble gum, and taffy. <laughs> MC, baby. Oh, did you ever watch that uh that new movie? That I came tried out? and I'm just like uh, it, not I ready. watched it, it was not, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Yeah, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't it's just like Aquatine, the first movie, right? Aquatine was one of those things, it was a moment in time. We loved it while we did, and it's time to move on. Sometimes you gotta move on. Yeah. Let's move on to the next episode by ending this one, bro. Do what now? What? I said, let's end this one so we can get the fuck out of here. Am I doing it? (laughs) Hit him with the plug. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys for listening to the Car Jomez podcast. Follow us on all the social media at Car Jomez. Leave a five-star review and subscribe wherever it is that you are checking this podcast out. Get down in the comments on YouTube. Uh, hit us up on social media. We love all that shit. You can follow my personal stuff at The Joe Shoes. Get one of these handsome Captain's Log t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Joe Shoes. And also, if you wouldn't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash Joe Shoes. Mm, the Gomez 154 Instagram and Twitter twitch.tv slash Mez movie. And we we'll got something back. up my sleeve. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll see. Mm. <laughs> we'll be back next week. We're watching The Flash, the big release. We've been hearing about it for months. Did DC finally figure this shit out? We're going to find out. As they get ready to reboot everything. As they get ready to reboot the system. <laughs> they finally, did they end on a high note? Even though it's not the end. Right? We still got Blue Beetle yep. and Aquaman, I believe, is still supposed to come out. We'll see about that. That keeps getting pushed back. Uh, yeah. But uh, can't wait for next week. But that's next week. So uh, Until then, we better make like Tom and Cruise. Peace.